Hi, and welcome back. Today we're on EDM lesson 6.4. And what we're going to talk about today is line plots. So today what we're going to do is we're going to organize and interpret measurement data. A line plot is basically a type of graph in which data points are represented by X's. And the X's are placed above a number line to show how often each value appears in the data set. So what we're going to do is we are going to pretend that we have a classroom of 20 students and each student was asked to measure their pencil to the nearest quarter inch. So on Math Journal page 205, what I have done is I have listed down the measurement of 20 students pencils. So we're going to use this information um, to create a line plot. So let's go ahead and look at what we have here. Um, we have different measurements and what we need to do is figure out how to create our number line, like what we should start with, what we should end with, what we should title our line plot, and what we should label our line plot. So we have a lot of information here to work with. Now it says the largest value in the data set is what? So what we need to do is find the largest measurement. And what do you see as the largest measurement? Yeah, seven and one fourth. So seven and one fourth seems to be the largest. Now, what do you see is the smallest measurement taken by one of our students? Yeah, two and a half. Good. Now, so let's talk about what would be a good number to start our number line with. Should we start with zero? Because most number lines start with zero. Should we start with zero here? Yeah, we don't need to start with zero here because our lowest number we can see is two and a half. So wouldn't it be better to start it with a number that would be closer to two and a half, our beginning number? Because there's really no sense to start with zero if we know we don't have any that are that small. Yeah, so like what you're thinking is saying, could we start with two and a half? Yeah, two and a half is definitely a good solid number to begin with. Now for me, I always like to start with a whole number just because it makes it a cleaner looking line graph, okay? So what I wanna do is I wanna actually start with two. So I think two would be a really good beginning number for us just because it's a solid whole number. So our next question would be, what is a good number for the line plot to end with? Yeah, so our biggest number you can see is seven and one quarter. So we could end with seven and one quarter and that's absolutely fine. Um, with me, I like to end with a whole number whenever possible. So I'm gonna say I would love to end this line plot with an eight because that's a nice solid number to end with, good. Now, we measured each pencil to the nearest one quarter inch, okay? And so we should label the number line with quarter inch marks. Yeah, so we don't want to like go from two, three, four, five, and so on. We want to make sure that we can also include those quarter inch marks in there as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at this and we're going to go ahead and complete this number line and hopefully we can get all the way to eight. So if we want to label with quarter inch marks, this would be two. So our next one would be what? Two and one quarter. Good. So two and two fourths, which is also equal to two and a half, right? Two and three fourths. So that would be three, good. So here would be three and one fourth, three and two fourths, which should also be three and one half, good. Three and three fourths and four. And we're just gonna keep going and see if we can get to eight. Four and one fourth, four, two fourths, which is also four and one half, four and three fourths, five, good. Five and one fourth, five and two fourths, which should also be five and a half, five and three fourths, six, good. Six and one fourth, six and two fourths, six and three fourths, seven. Seven and one fourth, seven and two fourths, 
seven and three fourths, eight. Guess what? We were able to get all the way to eight here, which makes it really nice for us because it begins and ends with a nice solid whole number. And I really like it when we can get that to happen. Good. All right. Now what we have here is we have our number line, which is great, but what does it mean? So one of the things you have up here is a line, and what that's used for is to label our line plot, to basically tell our viewers, like, what is it that this represents? What are all these numbers? And what are all these numbers? Yeah, it's the lengths of the pencils. So this would represent pencil lengths. So I'm gonna write down pencil lengths right here at the top of our page. So pencil lengths. So that would be the title of our line plot. So what we need to do then is we have another line down here that we're supposed to label with something. Now, let's look at our numbers. What are these numbers? Are these two miles, two feet, two what? Yeah, two inches, because these were these pencils were, were basically measured to the nearest quarter inch. So this would be inches. Okay, so you always want to let the people who are looking at your line plot understand what is it that you're talking about here. We're talking about pencil lengths that we measure to the nearest inches and how many inches they are, and you can kind of see where it is. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to create our line plot by putting down X's. Now, remember, the X's are placed above the number line to show how often each value appears in our data set. And right here we have a data set of 20 numbers. Now what I like to do is go ahead and do this in order. I don't like to skip around. Okay, I like to do an order and just go ahead and just cross it off as I'm going to make sure that I have all my, my information in my line plot. Now also, um, what I want to do is when I put my X's down, I want to try to stay consistent in size and going across. Okay, if I have a jig jaggedy it's hard to compare all the data and it's harder to compare it if you have different size x's so you want to try to be consistent with what you're doing so my first one is seven and one fourth so i'm going to put an x over seven and one fourth i'm gonna cross it out five and a fourth four and three fourths three four and one half, five and three fourths, five and three fourths right here, six, two and one half, six and a half, seven and one fourth. Notice I'm going to put that X on top of the other one that's there. Seven and one fourth. Oh, I have another one. Three and three fourths, four and one half, five and three fourths, six and one fourth, seven and a fourth, seven and a fourth, six, seven and one fourth, got a lot of those, five and three fourths, good. Now, what I can see here is some definite information because I'm using this to kind of analyze what I have here. So we can say right here that, wow, I know that there are one, two, three, four, five, six pencils in this class that are seven and a quarter inches long, which is pretty cool. I can also see that we have a really short pencil here that's two and a half inches long, and it's probably not going to last too much longer. We can also kind of look to see most of our pencils are kind of within this range, which is nice. Okay, so we have some newer pencils that we're using. These, of course, would be pencils that have been around for a little while and been sharpened a few times. So we can kind of see right here um, where our pencils end up being, which is kind of nice when we're looking at this. It's a really good way of organizing the data. Another thing I like to do is to go back and count my axes just to make sure I included everything. So I know that there were 20 pencils measured all together. So a good thing to always do is to go back and count your axes to make sure that you have 20 axes because each X represents that measurement. 
So I'm going to go back and count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So that's nice because that ends up working out quite nicely. Now what I'd like to do is to also look at our home link that goes with 6.4 and we're going to answer some of these questions together because I also think it's important to kind of look at it and be able to also answer questions. So if you get out your 6.4 home link, we can work on these together. Now the first one says Sammy and Maria are keeping track of how much they grow each month. Use the information in the table to make a line plot to show Sammy's growth. So the top one is all going to represent Sammy, and down here it's going to represent Maria's, or Marla's, I guess I should say. I'm reading that wrong, Marla. So let's go ahead and let's look at this. So we have Sammy's growth, Sammy's growth, growth in inches. So we have the title and we have our label. So we need to figure out what would be a good number to start with. So we want to look at our lowest number. So what would be our lowest amount here? We have one eighth, one fourth, one fourth, five eighths, three eighths, one fourth. So what would be our lowest one here? Okay, so if we're thinking of this, I can see that one eighth appears to be our lowest amount, right? So we can look at this and we can say, okay, well, this would be one eighth, right? Okay, so this would end up being two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, five eighths, and we have six eighths would end up being that number there. Now we can also look at this, and what I like to do is also reduce the fraction so that we can see it another way or an equivalent way. So I know that two eighths is also equivalent to what? Now two goes into two once and two goes into eight four times. So I know that's also equivalent to one fourth, right? Okay. So now if I'm looking at this, I see another one here that four eighths, I know that that's also equal to one half. Good. And this one right here, we can go ahead and simplify that one. I know two goes into six three times and two goes into eight four times. So I know that that's actually equivalent. So I know two eighths and one fourth go together, four eighths and one half. And I also know that six eighths is equal to three fourths. And sometimes when we do that, that really helps us out. Now, the next thing we get to do is to put our X's down, okay? And each X represents a value in that data set. So January was 1 eighth, so I'm gonna put an X over that. Now I did that one. February was 1 fourth, and I know 1 fourth is right here. March was 1 fourth, so I'm gonna put that here. April was 5 eighths. We know May was 3 eighths. And we know June was one fourth. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that there. See, it really helped when we simplified that. So it made it a lot easier to look at. Now it says, how much does Sammy grow in six months? How many inches? So if we look at this, what would be his growth? So what, how much did he grow in um, all together? So if we're looking at that, what would we do with all these numbers? Yeah, okay, so basically we would end up having to add all these up, right? Okay, so how much did he grow in six months? Well, he grew this much here, 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 this much here. We're going to have to add all those up, which it makes it really nice if we can keep the denominator the same, right? So if we are looking at this all together, what I like to do is to take it and to add up each column. So if this would look at this one, this column would add up to 1 eighth, right? This would be 2 eighths, 2 eighths, and 2 eighths. So how much would 2 eighths plus 2 eighths plus 2 eighths be? Yeah, this would actually equal 6 eighths altogether, right? Okay, now this one would be 3 eighths because there's only one of those. Now I don't have any here, I do have a 5 eighths right here, okay? So if I took all these and added them together, I would be able to figure out how much he grew all together within that six months. So let's go ahead and add that. So we have what? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, plus five would be 15. So we have a total of 15 eights. Now we also know that 15 eights can be changed and I don't exactly always wanna leave it that way. 
So, but we're going to write down 15 eighths, but we also know that we can um, change that into a mixed number. And we know the eight goes into 15 one time, which means I would have seven left over and bottom number stays the same. So seven and I'm sorry, one and seven eighth inches all together. Wow. All right. So not too bad there. Almost two inches. Okay, let's go ahead and look at Marla's graph here, and we're going to see what we can figure out with Marla. So what do you think is the smallest value here? Yep, I would say one-fourth as well. So this would be one-fourth, two-fourths, three-fourths, four-fourths. This would be five fourths and six fourths. So if we kept going, so this would actually be equivalent to a half, right? And this would be equal to one and one fourth, and this would be equal to one and two fourths, which is also one and a half, which kind of makes that nice. So we know that all these numbers, and I'll circle these because these numbers are equivalent to each other. Okay, so let's go ahead and plot down our information. So we have January, which would be one-fourth, and February, which was a half. March was three-fourths. We have April, which was one-fourth. We have May, which was a half. And we have June, which was a half. Good. So once again, what we need to know is how much did Marla grow in six months? So we want to know all together, what would this be added up to? So once again, what I like to do is just to kind of go across and add it and makes it a lot easier. And if we keep with the same denominator, it might, makes adding up a lot easier. So let's stick with four as the denominator. So I have one fourth and one fourth. So all together that equals two fourths. And if I look at here, each one of these is two-fourths. So two-fourths plus two-fourths plus two-fourths. What would that equal? Yep, that would equal six-fourths altogether there. Then I have a three-fourths right here. And I don't have anything else for the rest of the graph, and that's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and add that up, and let's see what I get all together. So we have six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven-fourths altogether, right? So we can take this and we can say, well, 11 fourths. Well, how many times does four go into 11? Yep, goes in twice. Now, four times two, that would be eight, which means how much would be left over? Yep, three fourths. So two and three fourths inches all together. Okay, so our next question is who grew more in six months, Sammy or Marla? Well, let's see. Marla grew two and three fourths, and Sammy grew one and seven eighths. So who grew more? Yes, definitely Marla. So we're going to put down Marla grew more. Okay, and our next question is asking us, well, how much more? So we want to know what is the difference between these two numbers? So what does that sound like we have to do? Yeah, we're going to have to subtract those. So we are going to have to take, and it says write a number model to show how we solved it. So we can go ahead and put that there. So we want to take two and three fourths, and we want to subtract one and seven eighths from that to get our answer. So I'm going to go ahead and work that out here at the bottom of the page. So I'm going to move this up so you can see my work. So I have two and three fourths subtract one and seven eighths and I know right away that I'm going to have to make some changes there because my denominator is not the same. So I'm going to do my arrows of change, bring over my whole numbers, and what would be a common denominator there? Yeah, eight. Eight would definitely be a common denominator. So here, no change, no change. Now how did I get from four to eight? Yep, times two. So whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. Three times two is six. Good. So now I can look to subtract. Well, six eighths minus seven eighths. I know I can't do that. So I actually have to do one more step. I'm going to have to rename. So first of all, when I rename, I have a little trick for that. If you saw in one of our earlier lessons, we call it drop it down, add it together, bottom number stays the same. So drop it down add it together. So I'm going to add this number and this number together, and that equals 14. 
bottom number stays the same. And then our number down here gets a free ride over. So now I can actually subtract after all that work. So we have 14 eighths minus seven eighths would be seven eighths and one minus one would be zero. So all together, how much more? Seven eighths of an inch, right? And that would be the difference in how much they grew. Nice, all right. So once again, you did a really good job. And the good thing about line plots here is that it's a good way to compare data. It's, it's a good visual. You can kind of see which numbers stand out more than others. If there's a gap, if there's a common area where they're mostly this size and not too many this size, or you can use the information then to um, answer additional questions, which makes this really nice. So once again, thank you for hanging out with me with lesson 6.4, and I'll see you again in the next lesson.